I'm back. Just in case you're wondering. Um, I, I've been in Texas um, for an entire week. I, I can tell you I got more hair on my chest than I've ever had. My voice has never been so deep. You guys, I killed 54 birds with my bare hands. <laughs> No, I just kidding. I had a big shotgun. Um, yeah, I went bird hunting. It was amazing. Um, got to hang out with uh, Pastor Troy Brewer at Open Door Church. Um, it was absolutely incredible. We, you know, we did like uh, uh, two whole days of filming. Pastor Troy invited me to come and hang out with his, with his team. I'll tell you, I got there on Sunday and, uh, and he had a meeting. And they were starting to get into some of the, some of the details, you know, um, in church life. There are these meetings, and sometimes there's details, and then there's kind of like the juicy details. You know, like you know, juicy details are like the details like, should I really be hearing this right now? You know what I'm saying? Have you ever been at someone's house and like a couple starts talking, and you're like, I'm just going to go use the phone or bathroom or something. Like, you know, that's what I felt like. So I, I got up and, to leave, and Pastor Troy was like, Darren, you sit down. And I was like, oh, okay. Like he wanted me there. I was there in the car with him for all of his phone calls. Um, it, was, it, was, it was absolutely just so incredibly um, eye-opening. Such an, I've never been honored like that, um, and, uh, you know, by, by, by another minister um, like that. I mean, I've been honored. I'm loved. But, I mean, to be invited into that level of transparency was, 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 pretty, was pretty incredible. In fact, I'll tell you, um, I was at one meeting. We would do lunch, you know, each day as, as, as a team. And the church would bring in. This is how they do it in Texas. Um, you know, if it were Seattle, we'd bring in like some kale chips or something. <laughs> you know, some like a cucumber sandwich and, you know, they bring in literally like 150 pounds of ribs and brisket and, and there's only like six guys at the table, you know, man, I must have eaten like 40 pounds of beef. Like each, I was just like, like, you know, the savage came alive and I was just like, me, yeah. Like, it was so incredible. I was like, you guys are, I was like, this is what you do every day? Like, they, they just bring in all this, all these ribs and stuff. And, and then on Tuesday for the, um, on the Tuesday meet, I got to meet Pastor Matt. And um, Pastor Matt gives oversight to like all the really cool next level stuff that they're doing all the, in all the nations. And Pastor Matt brought in a report that Pastor Troy hadn't even seen yet. So this is like the first time that Pastor Troy is seeing this report. And it was a report for what they did in the month of January. And so he's like, Pastor Troy, I'm happy to report that in the month of January, we clothed 75,000 people. Uh, he said, I'm happy to report that. And, and, and Troy's face was just like, like blown, blown, blown away. I mean, I, I will say this. They do, a really, uh, they do a lot of cool stuff. But it's because, like, Pastor Troy and his wife, Leanne, they, like, really love people. Like, they really love people. Anyways, who knew that that would be important, right? So anyways, um, <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, and then there's love, <laughs> right? You know, good times. So then anyways, they were like, uh, Pastor Matt was like, uh, Pastor Troy, I also want to report to you that we saved in the month of January 333 children. Yeah. And like, I was like, I was like, my jaw, my jaw was like down, barbecue sauce everywhere. Like, and you should have saw Pastor Troy's face. He was like, he was like, you know, give me that. And he took the report. And then we got to, now, when I say save three and three, that's not just from sex trafficking. Okay? A lot of that is uh, preventative, preventative cases. And I'll tell you how that works. Um, we actually got to see 10 girls, little girls, that were rescued uh, just last week, like the week prior. And these girls, th this was a preventative rescue. So there's this little village at, uh, outside of Nepal, and it's actually completely isolated. So, you, like, so there's an army. I don't know if it's a Chinese army or what. You know, get all the details. But this like, little village is completely So there's no resources going in and out. So these people are, are starving to death in this, in, this, in this village. Well, then you got these orphans, uh, children whose parents have been killed or, just, or, or abandoned them or whatever. So what happens is, is that if these, if these orphans aren't taken care of, if they're not, if somebody doesn't take care of them, you have these uh, cartels or these traffickers 
hackers and they'll come through these little villages and they'll just and they'll and they'll and they'll kidnap these little girls and they'll 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 kidnap them for sex trafficking uh, we got to see 10 of these little girls that were rescued so instead of being kidnapped by a cartel they were actually kidnapped by Jesus people that means we got them first and we got to go through we got to go through page by page and see all 10 girls we got to see them in their new clothes their cute little tummies were all were all sticking way way out cuz they hadn't had any food and so these little girls they eat whatever they can a lot of times they're they're literally eating dirt and that's what happens apparently when you eat dirt your your tummy just just def- you know, goes goes out like that, and but these girls with just beautiful, beautiful smiles um, on their on their faces, and um, and so it was it was just it was absolutely incredible. So, anyways, I am super super excited because in the month of December uh, we raised uh, over twenty six thousand dollars as as a church um, to rescue children to buy them out of sex trafficking and slavery, and so that's about nine girls, and so I'm going to be working with Pastor Matt. And we're going to have some stories. We're going to have some. These are real girls. Uh, they're considered commodities. They're considered products. Each one of these little girls is worth about $30,000 as far as how much money they can bring in uh, through being sold uh, as prostitutes. And so these girls are rescued. And we're going to get to hear uh, real stories of real girls with real names, with real souls who Jesus loves so deeply. And we're going to get to celebrate um, their stories uh, this next year. And, um, and man, I'm, I'm all stinking in, man. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm wrecked by it. And, uh, and I know you are too. How many of you just feel like you're wrecked by the love of Jesus right now? And you don't want to get better, do you? I want to get, I want to get worse. So anyways, I, I will tell you that my life is, is changed. I, I am radically changed um, just being in there and being in their atmosphere. And um, we had a lot of, we had a lot of fun. And now, now I'm back. Now I'm back. From out of space, you should And then it's also, today is um, Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> and that's why you're here, because you obviously don't care, you know. <laughs> Super Bowl, is that like a golf thing or something? <laughs> right, like, anyways, I'm glad you're here. It's all, obviously, the hardcore people are, are getting, the, getting their ribs and brisket ready. Um, I'm wearing my Chiefs uh, sweatshirt, and somebody asked me, like, uh, Right, right, like, are you really a Chiefs like, I wasn't, no, it was uh, these other guys. Are you really a Chiefs fan? I was like, look, bro, I, I, I could care less. I am not a football guy. I am like, I am a total football poet. I swear to you, I haven't watched a game this entire season. I, I, I could care less about football. That's just who I, like, I, I really could. I don't give a hoot, as they say in Canada, about football. But I bought this. Because um, 2020, um, it's obviously a knockoff. It doesn't even have the Chiefs logo on it. But anyways, um, I obviously just got ripped off. Anyways, good. Uh, <laughs> I bought it because last year uh, the Chiefs were in the Super Bowl. And Bob Jones prophesied um, that the year that the Chiefs finally win the Super Bowl would be the year that, the, uh, that there'd be an emergence of the new apostolic Chiefs. And that it would usher forth with the changing of the guard a new apostolic reformation or a fresh revival on the earth. And so we were all like, revival 2020, right? Like, revival. And then it was just all of a sudden like, nope, global pandemic, yay! Right? Like, you know, how's this for revival? Like, if you leave your home, you know, you're a spreader, a super spreader. You stay home, stay safe, right? So here we, we went into the year like, revival! And then we went into just like, like, just into this dumb year. I said it, not you. I know it's your best year ever, whatever. So anyways, but like we went into this year that was just like, are you thinking, like I remember I was in that back room with all our media guys. We'd just done 12 weeks of, of Saturday night live services and, and I was done. Like I was stinking done with online services. But everybody said, no, today's the day. Governor Inslee's going to make an announcement. And I was like, yay! And so... We just got done filming, and Anthony knows the story. We all go back in the room. We get Governor Inslee. 
Get them on the bat screen. So we get them on the, the screen. I am so excited. This is finally over. The world's going to get back to normal. In fact, I get my phone out and I'm going to video it because I know we've got that room that are full of guys that are not social distancing. And when Governor Inslee says, you can now gather at your churches, we're going to erupt in cheers and we're going to celebrate together. So I got my phone going. We're all in the room um, together. And, and Governor Inslee says, all right, you know, here we go. If you're busy, now we're going into phase 13B 49A. And I was like, what the beep? I was like, when did you add a dash B59? I was like, what is a niner? You can't do that to the, there should be phase one, two, three. What, Inslee, are you doing? And he's like, hey, if you're a church, you know, and you're under this name, people, you can now meet outside in the rain. And I was, I tell you what, I threw a pity party. Nobody in the room cheered. I turned on my phone. I was just like, that was 2020. Like, here we go. It's going to get better. There goes my tooth. I threw a pity party. I was like, fully on that. I'm not making my people stand out in the rain, stand out in the cold. We're in stinking Washington State. This isn't Texas. We're not going to be out there with our little kids and children worshiping Jesus in the freezing northwest weather. And then Jesus spoke to me. He's like, you're being a crybaby. He's like, there are countries where, and he reminded me of the stories my dad used to tell of the meetings he used to do in hotel rooms where he would open up a hotel room and the believers were stacked into a hotel room like sardines in a can and they'd have to sing in a whisper because if the police would call, it would mean all their lives. And I can't gather outside to worship Jesus in the rain. So I said, we're going to do it. And God bless um, uh, Horatio and Zoma as, as they came in and said, I, I like your, your makeshift little tent, but do you want me to just make this whole thing a tent? And I was like, how much will that cost? He's like, I'm going to do it for free. Horatio, there you are, buddy. Come on. <laughs> Horatio brought in a team of guys for two days, volunteered, did not charge us a dime, turned that whole outside area into a giant tent. And for another four weeks, we gathered three to four services in order to, to meet CDC requirements. And we gathered and we sang to Jesus and we loved Jesus and we worshiped Jesus out there with masks on in the freezing cold flipping rain. And those were some of my favorite services in 2020. And meanwhile, I was hearing people say, well, the prophets got it wrong. It's not time for revival. The prophets got it wrong. And you know what? I said, the year isn't over yet. And the Chiefs won the Super Bowl. And I don't care what's happening. I don't care what the CD. I don't care what Inslee. I, I don't. We've got a word. The word is the new apostolic Chiefs, that there's a new move of God. It's a changing of the guard. And I don't flipping care what's going on. We are going all stinking in. Revival now. Revival now. Revival stinking. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting for the next move. I'm waiting for the next move. No, honey, I am the next move. I'm, I'm, I'm going to... We just need to wait for the next wave. No, I'm on a wave. You better get on it. We went all in. We started taking teams everywhere we could. Taking teams, doing revival. Started seeing miracles. Started seeing deliverance. Man, we ended 2020 on a mountaintop. And this is what we said. And this is what I'm saying right now. I don't, I don't care who wins this, the, the Super Bowl today. I really don't. I don't care. Why? The Chiefs already won. And this is what God's saying to America. Hey, you better stink and wake up because I'm giving you another chance. It's time to move. It's time to get on the front line. It's time to engage. It's time to stop with the pity party. It's time to arise and shine. Why? The Spirit of God is moving. He's moving. He's moving. He's moving. He's moving. He's moving. Seattle Stinking Revival Center, I am pleading with you. How's this for seeker sensitive? Don't let this revolution pass you by. It's time. 
It's time. It's time for the Chiefs to arise. 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 All right, I'm glad you're excited about that. Good. Awesome. And now, beloved, to the reading of the word. If you turn your Bibles to uh, Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. This one will be familiar. Even if you're not in, into the whole Christianity thing, you'll, you'll probably know this, this, this one. This is, a, this is a famous one. Guys, today we're going to be talking about kingdom now. What is the gospel of the kingdom? And what is our role within it? That's the two questions that we're going to attempt to answer today. Kingdom now. What's the gospel of the kingdom, and what's our role within it? Jesus was talking to his boys. It was like the sound of music. Any sound of music fans? Just me. Don't leave me hanging. I know. I know. I see you. I see you. Remember the scene when all the little kids are like, but we don't know how to sing. Teach us how to sing. And she's like, do, a dear. This is what happens here. All the disciples are hanging out with Jesus, and they're like, Jesus, we don't know how to pray. Teach us how to pray. And Jesus is like, okay, pray this way, right? He said, when you pray, pray like this. Father, Dad, I know where you be. You're in heaven, hallowed, holy, separated, sacred, majestic is your name. Let your kingdom, the rule of your reign in reality, come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever, ever, 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 ever. Amen. Now look, I know who you are. You're an Esther Seer. Brandon, I'm coming down. And here's what this means. You are not about just church meetings. You're not just into filling a seat. You know that the kingdom of God is at hand. You know that the kingdom of God is inside of you. You got big dreams inside of you. You got a big story. You got a big testimony. You got big authority. And it's inside of you. And you know it. You're here because you're a weirdo. And that's why I'm here. If you're looking for a church without the weird stuff, yeah, wrong church. You're here because you're into the freaky, deaky, heavenly. You're into angels. You believe in in casting out demons. You believe in the power of God. You're not looking to be flattered. You're looking for truth because you know that the truth will set you free. You're not here for the coffee. Even though the coffee ain't bad, God bless Tom Worman. God bless him. You're not here for the music. Although the music ain't bad. Good job, Melanie. Wow, good job, Chris White. You're not even here for the preaching. Although, if we're honest, (laughs) right? You're here because you want to burn on the earth. You're here because you're a burning one. And you're here because you want to be a part of a company of burning ones. 
You're here because you're not going to play it safe. You're not going to be conservative. You're here because you want to go all in. And guess what? That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. I'm here because I'm just like you. I'm a weirdo, just like you. I believe in the freaky dicky glory of God. Man, I've, I've, I've seen the smoke with my eyes open. I've seen the glory cloud. I've seen demons and principalities. I've, I've seen stuff come after me. I've seen people delivered in a moment. I've seen miracles. I've seen scoliosis healed and, and a demon come out of a kid as he was crippled over and couldn't stand. And he stood up and he was radically healed. I'm here because I believe these things. I have seen these things. And I know that that's why you're here. You're here not to be cute, although some of you are. You are here because you want to burn and because you want to change this earth with the glory of God. But there's a problem. There's a problem. And the problem is, we've got big dreams and we see big things and we worship a big God and yet... Every time we turn on the TV, every time we turn on the World Wide Web, that's how old I am. I still call it. Every time you get onto Facebook, we are reminded of this thing. It's still Earth. It still looks like earth. It still looks like flesh. It still reeks of the frequency of Genesis 3. And there is inside of me a frustration because I know what is available. And yet I am not seeing the level of manifestation of the kingdom of God in my life like I want to see. That's... That's my, that's where I've been. And that's where you've been. I know this because we're a family. We got the same DNA. We, we, we speak the same language. And if you're new here, don't worry. You, you, will, you will too. And you'll be weird just like us. Yay, don't worry. Like these guys are crazy. Yeah, you just wait. You just wait. You'll drink the Kool-Aid. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It all begins with the newcomer's luncheon next week. We've got a record number of people that, that are ready to be weird and wild. 50, 50 people signed up for that thing. Can you believe that? Yeah, we're all going to be sitting six feet apart. I, we're, you'll, you'll, you'll all be sitting out in the rain except for me. I'm the pastor, so I'll be inside. I'm just kidding. No, no we'll be close and we'll eat a bunch of food. But, you know... The Lord came to me, and, and I've told this story a lot of times. I'm going to tell it again. But uh, a couple of years ago, the Lord spoke to me and said, I, uh, Epcot. And I was like, Epcot? What's, what's like, Ep I didn't think anything. It would skip a beat. I hear Epcot again. Skip a beat. And one night, Saturday night, we're at a Mexican food restaurant, because that's usually where we are on Saturday nights. And there was a family sitting across the aisle from us. And guess what they were talking about? They're talking about Epcot. So I said to Andrea, hey, listen, I think the Lord wants us to go to Disney World. And she, and she said, yeah, no. We're not going to Disney World. We are not Disney World people. We are Disneyland people. How do you know there are Disney World people? And then there are Disneyland people. For the record, apparently, we are not Disney World people. We are Disneyland. Now, here's the truth. That fall, we actually went to Disneyland. So there's something about declaring a thing, and it'll be established, okay? Don't tell your kids that. But, you know, we, we, we did. But I went to bed that night. I'm like, Epcot. And the Lord spoke to me again. Epcot. And I'm just like, what? What does that mean? And so I Googled it. And up comes a picture of, of Walt Disney. He's standing in front of this big, crazy blueprint. It was his, his revelation of Epcot. Have you guys seen this? This huge, you should Google it. It's big, huge blueprint. And this thing, it was so big, it was so epic, that it made no sense to anybody. That he never got to see... The, his revelation, man, they tried to build, they tried to build an Epcot, but they butchered it and just turned it into another amusement park. 
Yeah, because when you don't have revelation, you just keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, thinking you're doing a new thing. Anyways, they, they didn't get to see his revelation manifest like because he was carrying it and it made sense to him. But what did he want? Well, he wanted to see, are you ready? Epcot, an experimental prototype, a community of tomorrow. Did you catch that? An experimental prototype, a community of, this is what he wanted to do. He wanted to build a literal city. There'd be a, a city within a city that would celebrate the ingenuity and creativity of humanity pulling the future into the present. It'd be a city that's constantly evolving. And when you step into the city, you step into um, an experience with the potential of what humanity can do when we work together. This is what he wanted to do. He wanted to pull the future into the present. This is what he wanted to do. He wanted to see a kingdom come, a will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yay. Good, good for Disney. Wasn't he a high-level Mason? Yeah, good time. All right. <laughs> I, I didn't say to worship Disney. I, I just said, all right, so experimental. Right? And so we've been talking about this, right? We, if you're new here, this is what we've been. We're going to build, and, a, you know, and we've been going, and I'm seeing, like, we're going we're gonna to get businesses, right? We're going to partner with businesses. We're going to get real estate. We're going to get properties. We're going to see a revival center in downtown Seattle. You guys, don't even, you guys don't even know this, but we've been looking at buildings. In fact, you know, just the other day, we had a, a whole team of us, and we were walking this building in downtown Seattle, big old building. We were walking through it with the real estate agent you know we're just we're just pretending like like the Cadillacs on a thousand hills belong to our father you know we're just like we're walking through this thing just like just like you know and my pockets might not be that deep but you don't know my daddy do you you know we're walking through it and, and the real estate agent's like what do you think and, I, and, and I'm like honestly I think it's too small <laughs> you know and, and we can't have these big old fat concrete beams right in front of our stage you know so I didn't feel like that but like but like we're we're just driving through Seattle just acting like it's our city, like uh, just acting like the Lord wants to give us cities and nations. And, and why? Because of this, <laughs> this Epcot thing, this, this permission for an experimental prototype, for pulling the future into the present. And if I'm honest, I've been like frustrated because I'm like, when, when is it going to happen? When are, when are the businesses going to, when is this going to, when are we going to get these restoration homes, these really, these, these places, these businesses, we can hire guys as they're transitioning, like, like just all this dream and all when is it going to happen? And how many of you, that's been your thing, man? Like, got so much going on here, but you're like, man, when's it going to happen? And then I don't know about you, but I read Jesus, and he says, let your kingdom come, let your will be done. And I'm like, man, even Jesus had to wait for it? I'm like, what? <sighs> how long? Man, this has to stink and happen in my lifetime. I don't want to just wait. And so this is where I've been, this is where I've been. I've been, I've been struggling with this thing of what is the kingdom and how do I interact with the kingdom? So if we're going to talk about this, we've got, to, we've got to talk about Jesus and the different ways that Jesus would explain the kingdom. Today I want to look at a question. What is the kingdom of God? And we're going to try to fill in this blank. The kingdom of God is... Remember when Judas Smith had the Jesus is, and everywhere you go, you see Jesus is underlined. Well, we're gonna, we ordered a, a, a 10 million bumper stickers that just says, The kingdom is. And I got a new book coming out, it's gonna be crazy. No, none of that's true. I, anyways, <laughs> I'm just having fun, just stinking. All right, the kingdom of God is underlined. All right, let's, let's figure this out. Now, Jesus, every time he's preaching, this is what he's saying. The kingdom of God is near you. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Metanoia, right? Step into a new reality that's triggered by a new thought. That's what repentance is. Jesus declares in Matthew 18, verse 3, he says, Surely I say to you, unless you become like a child, you won't enter into the kingdom of God. And all these guys, they're, they're listening to Jesus, and they're like, he's talking about the kingdom. He's talking about the kingdom. 
Unless you become like a child, you can't step into the kingdom. And honestly, what they're all looking for is similar to me. Like, the kingdom of God is coming. The kingdom of God is at hand. Okay, the kingdom of God is the Epcot. It's the experimental prototype community. Uh, it's businesses and schools and government and education. Oh, my. And it's coming. SRC, it's coming. This year, it's coming. Let's, like, all right, here we go. Chatter, chatter, chatter. Get ready. Get ready. We're ready. We're ready. You know, here we go. Awesome. And, 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 this, is, and this, is what, this is what Jesus, like, for the Israelites, they're like, the kingdom of God looks like this. It's, it's Jesus coming with war warrior authority to drive out the Roman occupation and to restore shalom to Israel. Like that's what they're, that's what they're looking for. And yet Jesus says the only way to enter it, as if it's possible to enter it right now, is, is, for to, is, is to be, you know, like a child. Now, because this is, this is what happens, and this is what's happened in Darren's heart in, in 2020 and everything else. The, uh, okay, we got to bring the kingdom. We got to execute the kingdom. We, the kingdom is coming. The kingdom is coming. Here's what the kingdom looks like. Frame out the kingdom. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. When will it come? Maybe we're not praying enough. Maybe we're not fasting enough. Like, it's coming. It's coming. But we just don't have the rich people. Like, we got rich people. We, we need richer people, right? Like, <laughs> like, where are the, you know, give me my, give me my Seahawk, Lord Jesus, right? Like, like once we've, once we've got the right connections, right? We as a church will be able to, you know, step into this, this kingdom reality. How many of you are with me right now, honestly? Like, like, like you understand your pastor's pain right now. Okay, awesome. This is what Jesus says. He says, you guys are all looking at the way you framed out the kingdom. Meanwhile, all these children are looking at me saying, he is the kingdom. All these people gather with all these agendas, and what do the children want? They just want to get closer to Jesus and sit up on his lap and to be close to Jesus. What is Jesus saying? The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is near. This is what Jesus is saying. The kingdom of God is standing right in front of you. How can this be? How can this be? The kingdom of God is Jesus. Jesus is the kingdom. All right, I'm glad to see everybody's writing that down. Awesome. Now, uh, in Mark chapter 1, verse 15, Jesus gets really dogmatic. And Jesus is talking. What does he say? He says, um, the time is fulfilled. Everyone say fulfilled. fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Declare at hand. Time is fulfilled. You know what that means, fulfilled? Nothing can be added to it. This is what he's, when he says that it's fulfilled. This is what he means. Time can no longer be extended. Would you just do this right now? Declare this over your family, your life. We just declare no more, no more. Delay. delay. This is what Jesus says. Time cannot be extended. There can't be a furtherance. There is no grace period. The kingdom of God is at hand. No more social distancing from the kingdom. It is closer than you ever dared dream to imagine. He says the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. But, everyone say but. <laughs> There's one requirement. There's one simple requirement. It's John 3. You must be born again. One simple requirement. You must be born again. We've got to keep it simple, you guys. What does that mean? It means you believe in your heart. You confess with your mouth. Jesus. The power of spoken word to speak and to create a spiritual reality. Jesus, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you are Lord, if you've never prayed that before, or even if you have, but you've, you've run away from him, you've disobeyed the Lord, he's no longer the Lord of your life. You can do this right now. You can pause the service and let me keep talking and let my talk turn into... You can close your eyes, you can disappear from here and, and up here in your father's world and say, I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth. 
you are king. I want to enter into this kingdom. I want to be born again. This is what he says. Jesus is the kingdom and the kingdom is the kingdom is the kingdom is the kingdom is Jesus is the kingdom and the kingdom is now this is what Jesus is saying you are invited Seattle Revival Center to participate and to declare a kingdom that's already here See, our Bible Center, we're being allowed. Melanie, as you're singing and leading worship, Chris White, as you're singing and leading worship, you are legally allowed and you are empowered to declare a victory that is already complete. Intercessors. How many intercessors do we have here right now? My intercessors. You are allowed to fight not for victory. You are empowered to fight from victory. The victory is complete. It is done. It is finished. So Jesus finds himself talking to um, all these Pharisees. Luke 17, verse 20. It says, when he was asked by the Pharisees, when will the kingdom of God come? Jesus answered them. Now, I want you to remember, these are Pharisees. Question, how many of you have ever met a Pharisee? I'm sorry. How many of you, you are a Pharisee? No, I'm just kidding. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not looking. I'm not looking. I'm just having fun. All right, so he's talking to Pharisees. This is what he says. He says, he's, he's talking to, they said, Jesus, when will the kingdom of God come? And you want to know what he says? Now, I want you to think about this. They think that the kingdom of God is Epcot. They think that the, that the kingdom of God is, 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 is the driving out of the Roman occupation. Right, Grant? Like, that's what they're thinking. And now, put yourself in their shoes, and this is what Jesus says to them. Are you ready? Jesus, like, my gosh. He just did not fear people. That's why he's always making people, hey, listen, I know that we're all about making Jesus hip, you know, like, I'm good at that, like, I'm hip, you know, I'm pretty cool, um, but here's, I'm having fun, um, I'm not that, I, I'm total, I'm poser, I, I, I'm, I'm a gab kid, okay, but anyways, uh, I know we're always trying to make, we're always trying to make Jesus like, Jesus cool, Jesus, no, 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 you worship a dude that got crucified, and why did they do that? Because they hated him. How do you know that your Christianity looks like Jesus? Honey, they going to hate you. How do I know that I've ever been a part of a real revival? They stinking hated us. I'm telling you, you start to manifest the fullness of the kingdom, and it's going to ruffle some feathers. Yeah. My God, if there was ever a time in human history to ruffle some stinking, flipping feathers, it's right stinking, flipping now. <laughs> oh, I'm going to ruffle some feathers. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. All right, what does he say? Jesus, when is the kingdom of God going to come? And this is what he says. See here. See there. The kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is Jesus. The kingdom of God is now. The kingdom of God is us. 
that the rule and reign of his righteousness, peace, and joy, that the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, the same spirit that occupied Christ Jesus is occupying me. Ah! The old Darren, the carnal Darren, that is a dead Darren. I am a new Darren. I am an alive Darren. I am a kingdom Darren. The kingdom of... Now, this afternoon, if some of you all go stinking and cheering at your television set, but you can't stink and cheer and go a little bit crazy right now, then you're a hypocrite. I'm going to tell you right now, the kingdom of God is Jesus. The kingdom of God is now. The kingdom of God is us. The righteousness, peace, and joy in the spirit of the Lord is inside of you. He's inside of you. Heaven is inside of you. The government of his justice. The government of his peace. It's inside. It's inside. Well, 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 well. No, but Darren, but Darren, Jesus said, Father, let your kingdom come. Meaning it's not here yet. No, meaning that you read that puppy in English. And despite what they'll tell you in Texas, Jesus wasn't an American. Don't tell them that. They think that Bethlehem's somewhere in Texas. I think they might even have a Bethlehem text. Now listen. <sighs> Jesus is not Texan. He's not from the USA. He spoke a different language. He spoke Aramaic. And then we've got good old king, all hail King James, who wrote this translation. They tried to do a good job. He made a couple of edits so that people would serve his agenda, whatever, God bless him. But we do know this, that when you read it in the Greek, when you read it in the, Amer in the Aramaic, you see a son that is teaching his brothers how to pray to the Father, how to speak to the Father. And this is what he says, let the fullness of your rule and reign come forth and shine out of us. This is what he says. This is, this is what he says. May we make known. That is in harmony with every sermon of Jesus, with every statement, because there's too much dissonance to say the kingdom of God is here, the kingdom of God is now, I am the kingdom, the kingdom of God is within you, but when you pray, pray this way, kingdom delay. Kingdom delay delay. No, that is not what Jesus prayed. Jesus prayed, pray this way, Father, let your rule and reign shine forth. Look it up. Do your strong study. You will see that shining forth, that you can read. You have permission to read the text this way without jeopardizing good and proper exegesis. Let your kingdom, the more manifest reality, let it naturally shine through me because of who I am. How many of you, how many of you are not ashamed to admit that you're an athlete? Raise your hand. And I don't want to be the only one raising my hand right now. <laughs> good, 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 good. Okay, I don't want to lie. We're at church. I'm a pastor. So I'm not technically an athlete. But you athletes know, and for those of you that are married to an athlete, you'll know that athletes are, are, are a strange brew. They are a different kind of deal. Why? Because, well, Pastor Darren is sleeping somewhere around 3 or 4 a.m. You up, and you've already drank a gallon of water. And it ain't regular, it's that pH enhanced, like you've bio-pimped out your water, like you're, it's 3 or 4 a.m. and you're just like, you know, you're on your, you're on your, your billion dollar bike with your live coach, it's just like, 
welcome. Are you ready to get after it? And you're just like, yes. And you're just, you know, and again, well, I'm sleeping, sleeping. You've already burned like 10,000. And then you, you get up and you've got your, you've got your green butter and you've got your, you've got your eggs that you ordered from Japan. There are these Japanese organic, like, and you're, you're slicing just like, ath- now here's the thing. <laughs> you get the point. An athlete does athletic life, and it's not weird because it's who they are. Because you're an athlete, okay, because you're an athlete, you wouldn't be got caught dead drinking a venti caramel macchiato. Just the taste of it would make you say, would, would, would fill your heart with judgment. <laughs> you're like, that is worse than a cigarette. Get that evil athletes they live their life differently why because of who they are here's what we've been trying to do as the church we've been trying to do the kingdom without realizing who we are we've been trying to do something because we think what we do it'll define us but that is not true it's what Jesus is done. It is who Jesus is. And can I talk to you for a second? Honestly, I separated Jesus from Epcot. Why? I forgot that Jesus is the Epcot. Jesus is the experimental prototype. He is the community of tomorrow. You see, here I am a little bit frustrated, waiting for the fullness of the kingdom, waiting for my Epcot assignment, waiting for my Epcot moment, waiting for your Epcot assignment, waiting for your, without, I forgot, he doesn't want me to build an Epcot. I am an Epcot. I am an experimental, what does that mean? It means I get to experiment. It means I get to succeed. It means I get to fail. Phil and Lucia, you are an experimental. Dude, I'm, I'm jacked right now about your guys' food bank. Yeah, come on. Dude, that food bank, bro. Those guys over there, they fed 70, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm numbers. I'll, I'll find out. Ridiculous. And guess what? It won over the heart of God. Remember when God was talking, was it Amos? He's like, get away from me with all your church services and revival meetings. Remember, he's like, get away from me with all, your, with all your charismatic stuff. You've forgotten the widows, the poor, and Phil and Lucia. You are an experimental prototype. You are SRC's Epcot. I was talking, the worship was amazing, but I, I, I was talking to Phil Seaton. I was like, let's get out of here for a second. So worship was going, and we just went out, out, out here in the hallway. I just said, what's Jesus doing? Phil just started telling me all these, you don't even know what Jesus is doing, Phil's like, but he's part of a real big Epcot in Bellevue, Providence Heights. Doing all, you will not believe the vision of what these guys, Phil, what's Jesus doing? He just started telling me all this stuff. You know, he is doing Epcot because Phil and Jane, they are an Epcot. <laughs> Carol Waggle, you is an Epcot. Why? Because the king of glory, the original, the original pattern, the original design, our original, ancient, of original prototypes, he is indwelling. I want you to declare right now, I am the righteousness of Christ Jesus. I am in union with Christ Jesus. I can do because I am. But if I don't get to do, I still am. I, you, can, you can take away the ministry opportunity, but I still am. You can take away my microphone. I still am. You can take away the church. I still am. You can take my job. I still am. I am. I am so I can do. But if you take away my doo-doo, I still am. SRC. The kingdom of God is now. The kingdom of God is us. Us shining forth with the light and life of Jesus Christ. You do not need permission to do this. You have been empowered. 
biblically. And I believe with all my heart that if we will begin to naturally come in sync with Christ Jesus, putting our uncoordinated childlike feet on top of the feet of our daddy, he will begin to waltz with us and dance with us. But I don't know how to dance. But I don't know how to sing. But I don't know how to do Epcot. But I don't know how to do kingdom. And the father saying, son, Darren, just put your feet on top of my feet and I will move my feet and it will move your feet. Darren, you just trust me. And Jesus said, if you've heard me, you've heard my father. If you have seen me, you have seen my father. As Jesus put his feet on top of the feet of his father and his dad, his father began to dance and waltz. And we read of the stories of Jesus and Jesus says if you've seen me you've seen the father in church you'll be able to say the same thing as I come in to sync with the dance of my father as I get Jesus back into, into synonymous that Jesus would be synonymous with kingdom it's not what I have to do it's who he is he is in me if I abide in him and if he abides in me I will naturally live my life and the glory, and the purity, and the splendor, and the brilliance of Christ Jesus will accidentally manifest out of my reality that everywhere I go, grace will abound because of who I am. The kingdom is not something I have to do. It's something that I am. And because I am, I naturally do. SRC, would you stand with me this morning? There is a dance. There is a waltz. There is a grace. There is a rest. It is Jesus. It is Jesus. It is Jesus. It is Jesus. And we got to make sure that, that you don't do what your pastor did. I separated Jesus from my Jesus stuff. I was doing Jesus, doing Jesus, doing Jesus. But theologically and practically, I had separated Jesus from doing Jesus. But all we want, all we want is Jesus. All we want is for his rule and reign, for his righteousness, his peace, and his joy to be made manifest, to shine forth, that we'd be heralders of this victory that has already been accomplished. Father, we thank you that your kingdom is here. Your kingdom is now. Your kingdom is Jesus. Your kingdom is us. Jesus, you have full permission to speak to us, to show us, for your light to come and to examine us. We don't want to be worn out by a religious spirit that would turn us into ineffective hypocrites. Playing some sort of American Christianity that has no seed, it's barren, it's childless, it's fruitless, it lacks power, it lacks demonstration, it lacks guts, it lacks influence. It lacks anything that looks anything like Jesus. Lord, we want to be fruitful, we want to multiply, and we want to take dominion. And we want, to, we want to be able to do it naturally and easily. And we want to have more fun than we've ever had in our entire lives as we good news stink in everything. Because <laughs> the second it's not fun anymore, it's like, is it even kingdom? You know, I'll just, I'll just take up fishing. I want us to pray together this morning. You guys ready to pray? Just hold out your hands in just a posture of, of submission and honor before the Father. And Jesus said, when you pray, pray this way. Would you join me, church, as we pray this morning? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Forgive us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. For how long? For how long? For how long? Awesome. God bless you. Come on. How many of you guys feel just charged up and ready? Come on. So many aha moments. So powerful. If our uh, ministry team could come, pastors and elders, come on up to the front. If you guys need ministry, feel free to come up. Um, again, we're exiting out this door and then to the back hallway. Uh, you know, there you go. Enjoy your uh, Super Bowl and uh, we'll see you guys next Sunday. Come on. See you guys. events and happenings at SRC. If you are a young adult, we wanna invite you right after this service to meet us in the cafe area. We're gonna have a special young adults meet and greet. Uh, so we're gonna have some snacks and drinks, and it's just gonna be a great opportunity to meet other young adults here at SRC, as well as some of our leadership. And if you're ready to start growing deeper here at SRC, we would encourage you to find out more information about our activation school registration, for this has opened up and it begins on February 28th. So for more information, scan the code on this morning's bulletin. You can also go to our website to find out more and also to register. We also just wanted to remind you that our grocery drive through is up and running every Sunday from 2 to 3 p.m. Uh, so if you could use some extra help with groceries in this season, we'd encourage you to just drop by. It's located our back gravel lot and we will load your trunk with groceries. Those are just a few things happening here at SRC. To learn more about other upcoming events and happenings, visit our website. <laughs>